What's up, everybody? What's going on, Ryan? A true bear, English Steelers. Baden, what's up, what's up? Reggie, Cesar, how y'all doing today? Anyway, I wanted to stream uh, some Diablo 3 PTR today, but the PTR got moved back till next week. It was supposed to launch uh, right about now. But yeah, it got bumped. Sadly, I was so anxious to check out the new Demon Hunter set. But it got bumped, so what can you do? Hutter, what's up? How you doing? Anyway, y'all, going through the check marks still. Wanted to knock them all out prior to launch. And what do we have left? Uh, we got Tornado Highlands, Ramparts, Throne Room, Arcane Library, and Royal Gardens still to do. Today I'm going to do the Throne Room. So let's get it. Nightmare Hardcore, yes please. And here goes. I'm not sure. I, it's been so long since I did this build. I'm not even sure the direction I took with it. I think it was a one wall situation there. Another here. Let's get one there and one here. And then just one here. Now, let's see. I'm going to need some gas, right? You guys will have to forgive me. I've got really, really just terrible allergy problems today. I am just coughing like a mofo. It's out of control. All right, let's see. Let's do something like that to get it started. We want another splody here. Actually, we want to split them. Let's split it. I haven't tried that here on this lane. I saw somebody do a similar build to that. I, I can't remember where I saw it. I mean, I saw it on the planner. So, someone did something uh, like this. I'm not sure exactly what their build was, though. Yeah, my allergies have been really bad the last few days, Thana. Uh, it's not really a matter of need, Hutter. It's just a 100% thing. I don't know what we're going to need for achievements, or we might actually have to redo them all. You know? It's more a uh, gotta catch them all sort of thing. <laughs> it, it, definitely more of the collector, the collector side of it versus the uh, ne necessity side. Um, I'm not sure, Alan, you have to try it out. I, I would imagine probably not, but maybe. I, I have no idea. Let's see. I almost G'd there. Let's swap out and get, uh, let's just go with uh, a little Huntress action. We want to use that monkey pet. I think we'd rather use a dragon, right? Let's get a dragon instead. What's going on, Thiago? Uh, face melters are definitely fun in theory, Redline. <clears throat> the problem I have with face melters is their... Man, I wish their animation could be so much cooler. You know, why would you not have a big old crazy f ball of flame going down the lane as you're firing it, you know? Oop, forgot about the copters. Better get to get to whooping butts here. I've got a 403 too. It's definitely it puts out good numbers, but it's it's very close range, and the animation is not uh, near as grand as you would think. All right, let's see. What's going on, Nihilus? How you doing? You can't spam it as fast on Xbox. That's unfortunate. I mean, it's more of a for the memes build anyway. It's not something you would want to do seriously, other than just for fun. But it sucks you can't get it to work. 
All right, let's see. Let's go with, uh, we'll throw an ensnare here. Gonna want some, how many DSTs am I gonna want? Let's see, what to do on the sidelines? Well, let's get some DSTs down first and we'll feel it out. Let's see, let's put one dead center. Oh, I'm out of juice. Out of juice! Don't forget, y'all, anybody that does want to uh, get involved with any Massacre Mode testing, the final Massacre Mode test is going to be this weekend. Or I don't know if it's the final test, but a Massacre Mode test will be this weekend. Uh, so you're going to want to contact Danny... You're going to want to email them at uh, cavalry at, chromatic, at chromatic games. Cavalry at chromatic.games. Yeah, it'll be on console as well. It releases on PC next week. Uh, it won't be on consoles until later. Switch is supposed to release in quarter three, and then PlayStation and Xbox will come after that. We don't have any dates or specific shit, though. But it will be on consoles. I'm anxious to see what kind of uh, the state of the product on launch day on PC, to be honest with you. I mean, we're going to have to see. Come to me, mana. Come to me, please. Alright, let's see. Man, my nose is just going crazy. The allergies here are out of control. Let's see. Let's go... Something like that. How much is this going to leave me? This will leave me 14 left over. 14 is not a lot, but that would be, what, 7... Per side lane. I'm trying to think of what I can do over here. I'd like to get another, uh, get an electric aura and strength drain aura going over here, but there's not enough DU for that. Yeah, it's 40, 40 bucks US. Uh, will not be free to play, so it's not going to follow suit with the DD2 microtransactions and all that good stuff. Let's see, what to do? I mean, part of me is screaming throw down a LT, right? But without Strength Drain R's, the LT is not going to do crap. But man, do I want an LT? What can, well, I can't really get rid of anything for an LT. I mean, I could thin out the DSTs, I guess. Do we really need that many DSTs? I mean, as far as ease of the run, I would say yes. You know, I haven't played Scrap Mechanic, but I saw other people playing it. It looks really fun. It's definitely a game I would uh, I would consider. This isn't a very good map for poons, except for this. These side lanes are the only good poon maps, or the only good poon lanes, really. I mean, poons aren't a bad idea, though. <clears throat> Pardon me. Yeah, man, my voice is shot today. Holy crapola. Let's see. Let's get Mr. Pooner out. You had to bring up the poons, didn't you, Redline? You know I can't go without poons once they're mentioned. <laughs> poons are a requirement. Let's see, we can go poon there. And out of juice again. Uh, I stream at 4K, uh, Ruther. I, I don't have a very good upload speed where I live. So that's why I have to go with the low resolutions and everything. <clears throat> I set it at 4K, but it uh, doesn't always get 4K. It does better on YouTube than on Twitch as far as holding the bitrate. 
But the problem with a game like this, with all the flashing and all that, one thing I can't stand is pixelation. And I would rather stream at 720 and have no pixelation than 1080p and have occasional pixelation, personally. All right, not enough juice left. Let me just swap back out to uh, the little Huntress Grill here. But a game like this is so, it's not that it's that graphics intensive, you know? It's just all of the bloom and flashy lights and all that stuff that Dungeon Defenders just loves flashy, flashy, bright, blind, epileptic, epileptic seizure type graphics. It's just what they've always had. What's going on there, Kiwi? How you doing? see how many bolts we're losing on this poon. Probably not losing that many, really. I mean, I'm sure I'm losing a few into columns and whatnot, but shouldn't be too terrible. A little poon always makes the world a better place, right? So we better get some poons going here. Starting to sound like, like good old Phil. Well, let me tell you, if I could sing like Phil, Redline. <laughs> My voice is shot today. It's the allergies is what it is. Someone with severe allergy problems like myself should never ever live on the coast. So do what I do. I move to the coast. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Let's get uh let's get the Poonin over here too. Oh no. There he is. Alright, let's see. What do we want it? Right on the on the pokey again. Did I put that one on the pokey? Yeah, I did. I just want to make sure nothing's getting blocked by this big old hunk of metal thingy ornament, whatever that is right there. But there we go, that is all of our DU. Now do I want to boost it out or do I want to DPS it out? I think it'll make the map run faster if I just DPS it out. But I like it. I like what I see. I think uh, I think it will be... I think it'll do decent. All about these poons, right? Are the poons going to be able to handle this side lane action? Um, I played tower defense games before DD1. I've always really enjoyed them. Warcraft 3 uh, custom maps really did me for the tower defense. It just made me fall in love with it. I mean, I play other stuff too, but I really do like tower defense. Hero Bryn, what's going on, man? Uh, Salivio, no problem. Well, the thing to think about there, Ruther, is not the high end, it's the low end. The majority of people watch streams on mobile devices, if you look at your analytics. And mobile devices are generally not going to be running a high resolution. See, I never really got into the uh, StarCraft maps. I've had a lot of people tell me that, though. I've just never, never tried them out. Get wrecked, Oga. I think we'll jack this area up first, and it's pretty easy to focus on the side lanes, just jumping around. Look at it this way there, red line. At least I can't fall off the map here. Yeah, your phone is 4K, but it's on an extremely scaled down monitor size is the thing. Uh, red line. Oh uh, yeah, I plan on doing lots of other series. I'm always open to suggestions. It's one of the challenges I have is I play so much Dungeon Defenders that I can't make up my mind what else to play. I always have problems, you know. 
I always have problems deciding. I've got so many games sitting in my Steam library to play right now. I mean, why the hell am I not doing a Terraria 1.4 playthrough right now as we speak, you know? Because I'm addicted to Dungeon Defenders. Yeah, I just streamed uh, DD2 on Tuesday there, Dreezy. I mean, I don't uh, stream DD2 as much as I used to. I'm going to play, I'm always going to play whatever the newest Dungeon Defenders game is. I'll still do the older titles, but the majority of my focus will be on the new. Plus, I mean, this game is really, it's set up, once they get things dialed in, to be absolutely perfect for a streamer. You know, one of the one of the things that a streamer always wants to do is make sure they can play with people on all platforms, you know? And this is, will be the first Dungeon Defenders game that has cross-save. So, like, once everything's said and done and all the platforms are released, you know, I'll be on Xbox on Tuesday, PlayStation on Wednesday, PC on Thursday, Switch on Friday, etc., etc. It's just really, really, it's the perfect, it's the ideal setup for someone that wants to do content creation. They gotta have some maps you can't fall off of, Redline. I mean, it is Dungeon Defenders. It's not Outdoor Lava Pit Defenders. You know what I'm saying? There's got to be some indoor activity, too. <laughs> I mean, who is going to build their throne room with big death pits anywhere? Who would do that? What king would want their throne room to have death pits? I guess there's probably a few kings out there that would do it. Well, thank God Danny's not king in the red line. Look at it that way. Danny would make for a very entertaining king. I'll give him that. <laughs> uh, I do like dungeon crawlers, Slevia. Not for sure. Thank you so much for subscribing there, Rice. I do appreciate it. Yeah, let's just focus on this. The damage on this lane here first. Alright, y'all. My allergies are through the roof here. My nose is just erupting. I gotta deal with this real quick. I'll be right back. Sorry, y'all. Sorry. Real life hits. Be right back. Sorry about that. Yep, you could queue up, queue up the Pantera there, Red Lion. I could probably sing it today. No doubt about it. Uh, it's possible. It's just an enormous grind. That's, in my opinion, not at all even remotely rewarding. Um, in fact, uh, random person mugs and fail will probably do it today or tomorrow. They're the only people within range of doing it, but they'll do it probably today or tomorrow, I would guess. What's going on, Brooke? How you doing? All is well. Hopefully uh, the same on your end. Other than the wife going crazy from being stuck inside all the time. She's not used to it, you know? She's gotten some game time in, though. That's, uh, that's a good thing for her. This is, and I understand it's only wave six, but jeez, this is going way easier than I expected it to. I mean, I'm almost curious if you could do it wallless. It would be what six 
12, 15 more DU, but I've got the two left over. Hmm. Very, very curious on the wallessness. Uh, they're actually really, really quick. Uh, Mr. Blue, it's just different maps. This map has got super short lanes. And they won't... They ramp up as the um, waves progress, so we're still in the super early waves. Wave 20, they'll be zooming right on up to that wall. Yeah, I should probably leave them just specifically because of that. I'm definitely on uh, on the easy waves here still. But you have to remember in DD1, we were able to skip all these waves, so nobody played these waves. In fact, when you first started a survival and never completed it before, it still started yet, like what, like wave eight? So it's just, you know, right now we're having to go from wave one, and wave one is all the stuff that should just be skipped. Shortage of ogres here, huh? I mean, you should be able to just wreck them all right up, but but they is ogres. Um. Well, I mean, you'd want a better relic than that, and you can just move your mods over to it. So you can either re-roll the main stat of the relic, or find a different one and move your move your mods over. 49k is about 2,000 under the high end for Chaos 7. 51,601 is the top number, I believe. Pretty sure that's it for Chaos 7. So, I mean, I wouldn't settle for anything under 51k, personally. I mean, you can always move your mods over to a new relic. You just have to have the crafting materials for it. But on the same note, if you're hitting a roadblock, it's not because of that. If you're hitting a roadblock, it's because of your shard, shard or mod selection. Nope, no strength drains. Somebody wanted to see harpoons, Redline, and now you're criticizing me about no strength drains? You're the one who asked for him. <laughs> what the heck, man? And here I said I was going to focus on this side, and what do I do? I get the other stuff upgraded first. Give me that mana. Uh, well, you can hold down Alt and see what the max is. I'm pretty... I mean, I don't have the game open right now, but I really thought it was 51601. It's not about that, though. You gotta remember, Dungeon Defenders 2, your loot isn't doesn't matter. It's a game of shards. Grind shards until your eyes, fingers, and ears bleed. And then you'll be about halfway there. Ah, you know, it's all about destruction, defense rate, and deadly strikes on every defense. You want those three shards on just about every defense in the game. I mean, there are a few exceptions to that, but as a for the most part, that is your starting point for every single defense. So if you don't have those on every single defense, then you're not uh, you're just not there yet as far as shards go. It's a grind game. I mean, it's never not claimed to be a grind game, you know?
Get wrecked, fatty fatty. More fatties over here. It's going to be pretty hectic in the late waves without having that strength drain. No, nah, that's not really true at all. Why? Because you can have the right combo and not have the right shards, and you're still going to lose. The game is 100% all about shards. You will not succeed without the correct shards. Now, by succeed, I mean push to the higher end content. You just won't do it without having the right stuff. Getting to Chaos 7 is not the high end content. That's the still kind of the starter area. Getting from Chaos 1 to Chaos 7 is where you're introduced to, to the different Chaos enemies and learn how to deal with them. And then as you go up from there, that's where the real challenge begins. It's definitely like 95% shards, 5% everything else. I mean, the game is all about the shards. Yeah, that's one of the big three. Destruction. Destruction, Deadly Strikes, and Defense Rate. That's the three. Yeah, and that's the thing. That's the thing that really turns off a lot of new players. Is like, it's a grind. Say you got ten defenses you like to use regularly. Or say, just say you got five defenses even. Say you got five defenses that you like to use all the time. You're going to want a destruction shard on all five of those defenses. Well, it might take you, I mean, if you didn't use your defender medals to buy shards, it could realistically take you a thousand hours to get five destruction shards. Well, then you're going to want to guild them. <laughs> and that means you need ten more for each one. You need 11 total destruction shards just to guild one. And you've got five defenses you like to use. So that turns it into you need 55 destruction shards. You know. Now, of course, guilding is is definitely more of an endgame activity. But it's if you tried to do it without using your defender medals, it's an absurd grind. Trust me, I've done it. It's thousand, literally thousands of hours. But it's all about the base shards. That's a hyper shard there, Dreezy. That comes into play later. Hyper shards aren't even as good if you don't have the base. So, all about getting destruction, defense rate, and daily strikes. But... You know, like I said, it's a grind game. It's never claimed to not be. Well, I mean, is there any free-to-play game that's not a grind game, to be honest? But Dungeon Defenders games are grind games to begin with, and then you add the free-to-play element on top of it. It's a huge grind. Uh, all heroes are pretty much the same, you know? If you want it to be based on hero damage, you put it in hero damage. If you want it to be based on using abilities, you put it in ability power. If you're having a problem dying too much, start thinking about your hero health. But that's the same applies to all heroes in that rule. We reckon it. Reckon it, reckon it now. Only wave nine. It's gonna be tough with here in the end waves with the build I chose here. <laughs> I'm not sold that those harpoons are the right thing. <laughs> Let's ch we'll check their damage done here. 67 million, what is a DST done? 
about double that, a little more than double that. I mean, they getting it and all, but they just not getting it that heavily. Yeah, they're getting some ogre bugs going. A little spider action, a little ogre boogie action. That doesn't bother me. It ledges to jump off of. I'm sure I'll get face punched by an ogre or something there, the sacred cow. Don't worry. Death is imminent. It's just a matter of when. <laughs> Pop that one up. So our damage is upgraded over here. That one's full up. And we don't have enough for this one yet, but pretty good start. Pretty good start. Copter Ogre to the face. Got lots of mana laying around. We getting it, we getting it. Cyborgs are easy peasy. Don't build traps, ours or nodes and win. Everything's out there though, y'all. Remember DD2 is a game that hasn't had an uh, update that changed anything in the game in like over two years now. So, I mean, all the info is out there for literally every single thing in the game. If you just go to my YouTube channel and scroll down, you'll see all of the DD2 playlists there. All of those playlists there are all current info. A lot of times people will see the video and see, oh, well, this video is two years old. Well, I mean, the game hasn't had an update in two years. So, yeah, the two-year-old video is still, still relevant. <laughs> We've had additions to the game over the last two years, but we haven't had a change to the game in about two years. Nah. Maybe one day, Redline, but that technology does not quite exist yet. STs need more pew pew. Oh crap, I forgot that there's plenty of land. Plenty laying around. There we go. So that is upped all the way. So now all I got is DSTs and support to upgrade, right? I think so. We'll just let it fly here. I mean, this is going to be just Ogre Killing Simulator. I, well, I got two choices, really. 
I can either sit back here and buff the DSTs, or I can go on ogre elimination duty, running around just spraying at ogres. Neither is a bad choice, really, to be honest. Well, we should get a check mark out of this deal. That depends on what kind of mood you're in, Redline. Sometimes I prefer uh, one or the other, you know? Yeah, there will be other heroes added for sure. Without question. You gotta remember, this is the launch version of a new Dungeon Defenders game. Every Dungeon Defenders game to date has launched with about 15 maps. Tw between 12 and 15 maps. And, f and the four original heroes. Missing all my ogres running around killing these packs. Can't be doing that. I don't stream AFK builds. I don't see the point. I mean, I've come close to it. You know, the summit builds now, just the smartest builds are pretty AFK builds, you know? Sit there and buff. But, I mean, I'm not going to watch someone stream AFK builds. So there's no reason for me to think people would want to watch me stream AFK builds, you know? It's all about... All about entertaining the viewer. Yeah, I mean, if I'm doing Q&A type stuff, then I try to either do an easier map or do something that's semi-AFK, you know? I mean, you guys know I get plenty of uh, Netflix in. So, I mean, what, what do you think is going while Netflix is running? <laughs> you know? But I'm not going to live stream that. But I get my share of Netflix for sure. Let's see, what else we want to do? I feel like I should just up these instead of repairing them. I got enough mana laying around to do one more, even. And a wall. Very nice. Here we is. I'll have to look and see who... Well, this build is not exactly like their build, but I do remember seeing a very similar build to this on the planner. I hate to not uh, give proper credit when I know that somebody has already posted one. But I don't know off the top of my head. What's going on there, Edward? How you doing? ogres first, and we'll get rid of these ogres. Come to me, mana. Come to me. This is slightly on the sketchy side for being wave 12. 
I'm wondering if this is going to finish. I mean, we'll see. We're getting mad ogre snot balls here. More than I thought I was going to get. This worries me in the late waves. These things may end up getting destroyed. They slinging boogies? a shitload of mobs. Only wave 12 and 2100 mobs already? Uh, no. DD2 is not getting any more updates. It is a finished product. I mean, obviously, these walls are getting brutalized a little bit, or they're going to be getting brutalized a little bit. The push is a lot harder than I expected it to be. Looks like we're good on everything else up here. Lots of mana here. It's not a very good angle for that the pins to be honest with you I guess it gets a straight shot down this lane and it gets a straight shot farther back in there uh, I think it there will be a free hero or some free heroes but they won't all be free I mean it'll be DLC just like any other game you know any other retail game new stuff. I mean, there will be free DLC as well. The first one, they've already said, is going to be free. But there will be, uh, there will without a doubt be new, new stuff coming that are DLC dependent. Oga's all over the place. Zako, how you doing? <laughs> if it fails, blame you. Well, now, if it gets to the later waves and it looks like I'm going to fail, I'll change the build. I mean, like I said, freeing up the poons, that's what, 12 plus I got 2 DU left? That's 14 DU. Thanks, Sarah Harshal. I appreciate it. Assuming I could save it, that is, before uh, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> I wish that the Inferno Trap was a little better dialed in.
Uh, there are no servers. Oh, will they host the servers for DD2? The servers for DD2 aren't going anywhere. The game's not going to get any more updates, but the servers won't be going anywhere. They'll be there for a long, long time. Many, many, many years to come. Don't worry about that. It's not going to be a game where they shut the servers down. You don't have to really worry about that at all. No, nah, there will be no correlation between DD2 and DDA at all, Casey. It'll be its own thing, and they said that they don't want it to be the flavor of DD1 either, where DD1 had like a bazillion DLC at, at super cheap, but there was like a lot of them. They won't be doing that either. So it'll be like a normal DLC. I don't know how much they'll charge for it, but it'll be comparable to other games, and it'll have multiple maps uh probably new at least in one new hero in each one uh stuff like that but it won't be like uh dd2 at all well dda is not done yet and dd2 has been in development for eight years so can't really make that comparison ellie uh towards the end of the year there harshall we don't have a date yet Oh, well, I mean, if it was up to me, I'd take the, the EV, but it doesn't matter what heroes you get. Get the heroes that you think are the most fun. If you like the game and you continue to play it, you're going to have all the heroes down the road here. You know, so just get them in whatever order looks like the most fun to you. Remember, it's a grind game, so prioritize you enjoying it. If you grind it just to grind it, then is it really a game? Or is it a chore, you know? So definitely put fun over everything else, in my opinion. Uh, DDA is a stepping stone. It's a new company. DD2... Trendy Entertainment made DD1. Then Trendy was bought out by a large investment company, and they made DD2. And hence, some of the monetization design decisions in DD2, which get questioned by quite a few people. Um, that's because that all came from a financial company. Well, DD2 was not doing well as a business, so the finance company was going to dump it, and the original owner from Trendy bought it back and decided to make a new Dungeon Defenders game, which is Dungeon Defenders Awakened. The whole goal of this game was to get DDA, or to get a Dungeon Defenders game into the Nintendo universe. So yeah, I mean, it's kind of a stepping stone, but it's a complete, it will be a complete game on its own, you know? I don't think I'd call it a test. I mean, everything's a test, I guess, but... If a game does well, it's a test <laughs> on whether or not it's going to be able to get financing for a new game, you know? But, like, DDE was a test, Dungeon Defenders Eternity. It was to test the Playverse system before they rolled it out into DD2. So that game was, like, straight up a test. Oh, well, the graphics are great. If you don't like the art style, well, then, I mean, that's the art style. It's based off of the original game, you know? The question is, is you not liking the art style enough to make you not want to play it? If it's not, then don't play it, you know? Nobody can, nobody can judge you on that. The, the game I bring up all the time is Minecraft. I got a thousand hours in Minecraft. And that's the worst looking game I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> so, it, but it's got fun, you know? It's got the gameplay. So you just have to ask yourself, is it that big of a deal if you don't like the art style? Because the art style is not the graphics. You know, as far as the graphics go, the graphics are amazing. You know, there's bloom and shadows and light. 
that were not even possible, like in DD2. But in DD2, there was also quite a bit of time and money dumped into the animations and the hero models. And it made those animations and hero models look amazing. You know, I definitely wouldn't disagree with that. But, and like I said, it's everybody's own choice. If that's... If the art style is too much for you to play it, then don't play it. You know, nobody's going to judge you on that. Play what you think is fun. If it's not fun, then don't play it. Well, that's just down to the optimization, too, there, Redline. I mean, once we get a little better optimization, hopefully it's running a lot better. It still it runs better than DD2, but DD2 is prettier in my mind. But I can look at it and see that as a business, you know, DD2 had years and years and years of art and design put into it. This game is going to release with under two years of total development start to finish. Actually, like, under a year and a half of total development start to finish. So it's a big, big difference between the two. But, I mean, it, as a game, it all comes down to one thing. Is it fun or is it not fun? If it's fun and you play it, there's no doubt you'll get your money's worth out of it. If it's not fun to you, then and you don't play it as much, then obviously it wouldn't be worth it. DD2 doesn't have any more updates coming, Imad, no. They're done. The company that created it doesn't even exist anymore. Chromatic owns the rights to it and said they will keep the servers alive. But there is nothing else coming for DD2. Alright, Zako, thanks, man. Appreciate it. The main thing they have to grasp for me is the loot, you know? The, like, one of the big draws in DD1 was farming up all that special loot. To me, that was a big deal. So, I mean, for, like, my main, the main thing I'm looking for is that. So, I mean, we'll see what happens with all the challenges in and pure strategy. And, I mean, there's lots of things coming, you know. I have. That releases what? Like, next week, isn't it? I'm going to be playing that on launch day. There's no doubt at all. I played it briefly during the beta, but I didn't get very much time into it. I love ARPGs. They're super fun to me so I mean I think I'll like Minecraft Dungeons I hope so I do indeed hope so see do I want to bother with the poison the thing is is you when you upgrade it it gets slightly larger and sometimes that hurts you you don't want things getting stunned outside of your damage zone you know I think we got everything on the map pretty close now, right? Gas trap 2. Mixed emotions on whether I should have upgraded that. I'm tempted to use this 2DU as just some more ogre decoys. In fact, let's do that. Let's use our 2DU. So let's grab our apprentice Waller and maybe get a little ogre decoy action in 
how do we want to do it? Hmm. Let's just do it here. Just give ogres something else to aggro to, you know. And hopefully they don't keep throwing all that snot balls at my DSTs over there. Well, I mean, considering they usually get stuff done really quick. Considering it was supposed to launch today. I mean, if I have a choice between playing Diablo 3's PTR and a brand new game in Minecraft Dungeons, I'm going to play the brand new game. So, I mean, if they both pop at the same time, the PTR is just a test server. It won't even be exactly like that when it launches. I'm just excited about it because I want to play with that Demon Hunter set. I really wanted to be playing it tonight. I'm super bummed. Oh, I forgot to look at my pet. I'll have to check it out here after this wave. Well, it's not really important overall. Like I said, it's more of just, I want to have fun and do it. That and how Diablo 3 usually balances their seasonal stuff is a lot of the time in the PTR, things are broken OP, and then they get nerfed for the live build when it goes out, when the season actually hits. And I've never really gone in and played around with any of that broken OP stuff, and I'm hoping the Demon Hunter set is broken OP. I want to wreck it. <laughs> it did, you know, obviously see what happens when the game goes live. I'm hoping it comes earlier. They put on their launcher now the 24th. So that's what... What is today? Today's the 21st. It's Thursday. So... That would be Sunday. They're not going to launch it on Sunday. Or it says the week of the 24th. I don't know. I'm hoping it wasn't a big deal and they get it sorted out later tonight. But, I mean, that's not very realistic. Devs don't work overtime and stay late for a test build, you know? Well, thanks, Arizozo. I appreciate it. Yeah, but that's the thing is the bosses are not going to tell them. They want to abuse them. They want to save the abuse for a more important time than a test, a test server on a decade old game. It's basic corporate strategy, Redline. You gotta save your employee abuse for the right times. <laughs> Never just abuse them right up front. Abuse them when it works best for you. <laughs> Terrible. You didn't go to Human Rights Abuse College? Neither did I. But I spent lots of years in the corporate world. Oh, good call. There, Joel. Good call. Let's see. Crappy upgrades. I mean, I'll save it just to save it, but... 89 ups. That stinks. It stinks! Uh, 
I think everything's good. Just a matter of repairs and upgrades now. What, we're an hour into the run? I think, right? 58 minutes, 59 minutes. The ogres are the only thing that worry me at all here. But I think it'll be fine. I mean, we'll have to see. It's only wave 17, so things will get a lot tougher here in a few waves. There is a lot of ogres, though. Holy crap. I don't remember there being this many. Here we go. Ogre decoys are working, but... They're also... The enemies are not taking any damage right there. Unsure on this one. Very much unsure. Got a feeling I'm going to have to be extremely active in these late waves. Staying solid at that 2200 mobs, which the mob count isn't really that terrible. Hmm, you know, part of me thinks I should make some changes here, though. I'm wondering, these are these DSTs are getting spoodered, so with them getting spiders on them quite often. I mean, if they get webbed, it's going to like be a real game-changer here in the late waves. Don't want them getting webbed, that's for sure. I guess I could always switch over to a boosty boy and not be so aggressive on the waves. Let's try a wave out like that. See if I'm playing on the Boosty Boy, if uh, it's not quite so intensive. Just so many repairs every wave. Holy crap. I mean, obviously, I don't need to do it every wave, but... Old habits. Alright, let's see. Let's grab a boosty boy here. Just put him uh, right here. Now, if I chillax over here, am I going to hit it? Doesn't look like I'm going to hit it from where I, put a, where I placed uh, the DSTs. Can I get up there without falling off? There we go. All right, let's see how this goes here. So I got that chromatic gemstone uh, of rate going, which will speed the rate up of the DSTs quite a bit. Lots of copter ogres that I was catching before. All of the ogres that are just running right past the wall into the middle are the copter ogres. They decide their aggro um, right when they first drop. So sometimes they'll walk right past a wall to get to another, you know?
Uh, it'll be on PS4 uh, later this year, uh, Lena. I'm not sure, uh, Hutter. I really hope they do. But I'm not sure if they will. You gotta remember, too, I mean, although the event item started as being um, from the developer, what really made the event items great was what the CDT and the community events team did after, you know? So I'm not sure, but I do hope so. That's one thing that DD1 did amazingly well was just having in-game events. DD2 was terrible about it. Like, way back, many years ago, they would do, like, weekend events and stuff in DD2. But they haven't done that in, like, years. Thanks there, Aiden. I appreciate it. Not very scenic when I'm hiding over here in the corner, buffing these DSTs, though, huh? Not very scenic at all. But it does seem like the wave went smoother. I'm not sure. Let's do one more wave with Boosty Boy here before I make a decision for the final waves. The Huntress is wrecking out way more DPS. Now, this is uh, early access now, Aiden. It launches on May 28th on PC. So we got, what, another week? They're supposed to be the um, one of their end game tests for Massacre difficulty going this weekend. Well, I mean, the game is just launching right now on PC. The trailer is for everyone gonna be the same game on all the platforms it's just a matter of you know like many games you gotta wait for it sometimes um well I mean if you just look at the development time it will be many many DLC in several years uh -huh, for it to be comparable in content to get comparable with DD2 will be relatively easy but to get on to the comparable content as DD1, it will be years. I mean, you gotta remember, DD1 had a lot, a lot, a lot of development time. Even after Chromatic was done with it, the CDT developed it for many, many years. Alright, let's see. I'm debating. I'm not sure I want to play Boosty Boy here, but let's go one more wave and see how it goes. What's going on there, Ethos? How are you doing? The Copter Ogres are really the challenge here. There's just so many. Do I think they'll put a cosmetic of me in DDA? I don't know. I hope so. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> but I have no idea. I mean, that's like the ultimate, you know? It's... Nothing compared to the Cowbolts. <laughs> Not many people remember the Cowbolts, Redline. <laughs> He's actually split. Uh, Hunter. The thing with the monk is skill and boost get to soft caps really, really early. So, like this one, I'm at the soft cap for skill and boost, plus, I've got points into attack as well. But the soft cap for skill is like 700 and change. And the soft cap for boost is like 1700 and change, something like that. So, I mean, you can get to both of those numbers really easily. But remember, too, as well, this is early access and everything will change on launch day with Massacre. We don't know what the new uh, Massacre 
requirements or restrictions will be, you know? No, I think after DDA will come DD3, uh, Lena. If DDA is successful and they develop it for several years, the next thing would be Dungeon Defenders 3. Oof, can't get up on top now. Boo. There we go. It's $40 US, Saku. Yeah, there's no wipes, uh, Aiden. It's not a beta, it's an early access, so there's no wipes. I'm surprised, to be honest with you. I thought that they would have wanted everybody starting fresh on day one, but... But yeah, they've said that the whole time through early access, no wipes. Well, I mean, it is, but it isn't, Redline. Early access is basically a beta. It's just... Early access entices people more than saying beta does. I think it's more of a marketing thing than anything else. But, I mean, obviously the game gets changes frequently, you know? Yeah, there's no planned wipes. I mean, they've said it so much now that people are going to throw a fit if they do have to wipe. I don't think that's an option, Mr. Nerdcorp. I think they have to, in my opinion. It was a big, big aspect of DD1 is collecting those trophies. Without them, it's just not the same. You know, they've said pretty openly that they want the game to feel like Dungeon Defenders 1. And without trophies, that feeling will be completely gone. So, I mean, they have to, you know? In my opinion, anyway. I can't speak for them, but... I couldn't imagine them releasing it without trophies, to be honest. You want that... The ultimate... The ultimate defender... Dungeon Defenders logo? Was that one Ultimate Defender, or was that one Legendary Defender? I think it was Ultimate Defender, wasn't it? You know, it's proven. That's just a proven game model. Having a way to collect achievements or trophy-type setups is like instant replay value in any game. Because people are always going to want all the stuff, you know? Especially when you're, like, prominently displaying them in your tavern. You know what I'm saying? People love that stuff, myself included. I want all the trophies. Well, it depends on what you're wanting to get out of it, really, Redline. I think in the Dungeon Defender situation, it's such a small niche community that just getting some people, getting more eyes on the game, people playing it, uh, plus a way to generate revenue. So, I mean, we don't know what their individual goal was in releasing DDA into Early Access. We never will. You know, that's just not something a company discusses publicly. I mean, just to show that point even further there, Hutter, I mean, I, like, my original Dungeon Defenders 1 account was my son's Steam account. That was, like, before I had the YouTube channel. Uh, mainly what I played at the time was MMOs, so I didn't use Steam for anything. I had, like, one game on Steam back then. I had TF2, or maybe it was even TF1, and, like, Left 4 Dead, and that was all I had. And I used my son's Steam account to play Dungeon Defenders originally. And uh, he ended up wanting his Steam account back, so I lost my Dungeon Defenders account, you know? So I started another DD1 account 
and I went through on that new account and I grounded out grinded out Ultimate Defender on the new account too. Just because how can you go? You know, you got all these spots for all these trophies and awards, how can you not go for them? It's just a big motivator to keep playing the game, you know. Well, I mean, yeah, it's far too late for any of that. I mean, early access players, they're not going to give any... I mean, maybe, what, a special pet or something like that? But they wouldn't really be able to do anything past that. They certainly wouldn't be able to do... Uh... I mean, I don't think they would do anything that was, like, its own trophy or whatever. You got all the Kickstarter... The, all the Kickstarter folks will have their name on that thing in the tavern. I got a guess as to where that will go, but I don't really know yet. Nothing functional, just something cosmetic. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. You'd get more productivity out of it that way. I mean, right now, I think they're happy with the number of people that are playing Early Access. It's just, remember, we're not playing it for them. We're playing it for us. Hey, you know? We're playing it to play the game. So, like, Chromatic's goal is they want us all reporting daily feedback and bugs and everything else. Stuff like that. But such a small amount of that actually gets reported. I mean, hopefully lots of stuff gets reported, but I'm just guessing. Nagiri? Hey, you like my bald-headed monk? I couldn't imagine the monk with hair. I just wouldn't be right. What's going on, Nagiri? How you doing, man? Where's his shoes? He got little foot wraps. He's all monkalicious. He don't need no stinking shoes. <laughs> He's got his little his little footy little footy wraps. Oh, if you had the ability to change their hair, I would without a doubt give them a full afro, Lena. <laughs> I don't know if you all were f are familiar with the other games I've played, but if there is an afro option, I always take it. <laughs> yeah, for sure, Nagiri. I've been playing, but I've been mixing it up quite a bit. If you look at my hours uh, for DDA over the last few weeks, they're considerably lower than they were uh, weeks prior to that. I did, you know, the journey mode, Nagiri, is so ungodly cheaty. It's built into the game. <laughs> But it also hits a little collector thing. Because, like, you'll have a choice between using this higher quality ore that you just got or banking it for later where you can unlock a, a slot that will allow you to have an unlimited amount of that ore. So it's super, super duper cheaty. I almost felt guilty playing through with it. But it was fun. You know? I haven't finished a playthrough yet. I've gotten I've got my playthrough on hard mode now. I was debating on starting a fresh one for stream. What's going on there, Jaime? Michael, how you doing? But the changes they made to Terraria is def it's definitely worth another visit for anyone who hasn't played it in a while. Hop in and get another playthrough going. 
that's another game out there that people, no one can complain about their dollars per hour of entertainment. It's just an awesome game. They just did fantastic with that. Alright. Let me see something real quick, y'all. Sorry, I gotta tab out and refresh my little YouTube studio overlay. Looks like it timed out on me. There we go. It's back. It's back now. Uh, Massacre next week. Nagiri on May 28th. Uh, it launches on PC, and then we'll have Massacre Mode, and Pure Strategy, and all the challenges, and all that good stuff. I'm looking forward to it. Yep, a week away. We getting close. We are getting close. I tell you what, for having 2300 mobs, the waves seem to run relatively quick. Um, I mean, to me it was, Zako. I've got what? I think I'm at like 800 ish hours now. 801 hours, you see there? So, I mean, to me, it was well worth it. You get 800 hours into any game, you've, got, you've gotten your money money's worth, you know? It does feel faster on the Monk. That's the weirdest thing. It's still got its hiccups, Nagiri, but it is better than it was. The late survival waves still get a little chunky, particularly playing multiplayer. A little chunky... Sure is a shitload of copter ogres for this being a completely enclosed indoor map. Where the hell are they coming from? They like teleporting copter ogres that can just blast right on into the wall and call it good? What's up with that? They are indeed coming through the walls. No doubt. It's like my little apprentice walls are getting getting exploded. That's all right. Rather have the apprentice walls get exploded than the spike blockade down there. That's the last resort. I didn't even think about that, but for the kobolds, that was definitely good. Saved me a little cobalt abuse right there. So far, so good, though. Alright, Jaime, take it easy. Thanks for swinging by, man. Have a wonderful evening. Or morning, or whatever it is for you. Hit that one. Yeah, that one's good. 
I just feel like something should be right here. Even if it was just another explosive trap, they would probably chain together. But I think that would add, really add to the build if each lane had an explosive trap like right here. What would that be? That would be 60 U. I've got two right now. So I would need to free up four more DU, which just isn't going to happen. I mean, let's see if this Poon is putting in its work, though. It's done 347 million damage. What has this one done? This one's done 331, so it's done comparable damage. The DSTs are all over a billion, though. Yeah, every one of them. What about this Splody? Ah, it's actually done as much as that explosive. It's done more than this explosive trap. What about this side? Yeah. It's done more than the explosive traps on both sides. So, I mean, it's putting in work, I guess. I bet that electric R up there has got a ton of damage on it just because of the range. It's hitting a lot of mobs, you know? No, no more updates for DD2. Whiskey, it's done. It's a finished game. It's a finished product. What's going on there, Enoch? How are you doing? Copter Ogre's out the wazoo here. Uh, to me it is I've gotten plenty of hours out of it already well I mean they may take away the Christmas tree eventually because that doesn't require an update it's more like flipping a switch but it's just so low priority for them right now I can't imagine that tree is going to be gone anytime soon Delphs all up over me. Ooh, I got spoodered on top of that DST. Am I stuck? Oh, no, I got out. I thought I was stuck behind it. Your DD2 is bugged. I think that's possible there, Nico. I think that is a possibility. I mean, we'll have to see, you know. I mean, I'm hoping that the game ends up having a lot of heroes. Well, I mean, if the Abyss Lord came, it would come in the DD1 flavor, I think, as the Summoner. The Summoner was definitely heavily loved in DD1. The Abyss Lord variant of the Summoner that's in DD2 is a small shadow of it, sadly. Uh, this is Wave 24.
The Poons did good, Redline. The Poons did good. Forgot to repair that one. I think it'll survive the wave, though. But it's not a deal breaker if that wall goes anyway. Will not instantly signify the end. This is probably not really a build I would recommend, to be honest. In the flavor I did it, it's too much work. <laughs> Too much work. You'd think this map with its difficulty and where it sits in the axe being the end of Act 2, you'd think it would be a little bit more chillaxing. So this is definitely not the, the chillaxer build that I expect it to be. I get those all the time, Red Lion. I mean, I get two of those every day at least. They're super common for me. It's unfortunate. I've still I still don't have a level 90 giraffe after all those runs. I've done so many runs. And no no level 90 giraffes for me. Never even seen a bad one drop. I haven't even seen one with the wrong stats drop. Oh, I think the spiders are, are... Yeah, level 90 giraffes exist. I've seen quite a few of them on screenshots. I've been in games with uh, people that have gotten them, but I've never gotten one. But yeah, the spiders are just so much of the difficulty that if they took them away, it would be way, way too easy, is the thing. So I don't think the spiders will ever go anywhere. It's just more a matter of us dealing with the spiders, you know. I hope so, Hunter. I'm hoping to get some awesome massacre loot. Oh, just the web, not the spiders? I mean, the web is what makes them, really. I do think that it's a little OP that the web strips you of all of your damage reduction. Like, by default, you can get up to 90% damage reduction with armor, right? But if you get webbed, that armor value is completely stripped away. So people, this stuff comes and punches you in the face for full, uh, full damage. I do think that that aspect of them is a little bit on the OP side for them spiders. I mean, it's just, with spiders being such a big portion of endgame, it makes you think, why even bother with, uh that armor value reduction, you know? Well, you gotta look at the effective cap. Uh, for example, like in Nightmare, your armor gets scaled down um, to 55%. Which means if you can get to 90% damage reduction, what would you be at 90? You know, what would it take to get you to 90% damage reduction after the 55% has been scaled down? It's, it's exactly like DD1. And that number is 164%. So if you get to 164% armor, you're at the cap for Nightmare. When you're effectively in the game, it will only scale it down. It'll scale it down to 90%. There was a bug, I think, with the monk. I think it may have been fixed already. Yeah, we're going to have to see. I mean, that's the first thing I'm going to check on launch day. People are going to be a little mad and expect me to jump in and just start running maps. But I want to see what we're dealing with first. So literally the very first thing I'm going to check is all of the damage and stuff, how it all scales, you know? I want to see what I'm dealing with.
Uh, if you just started, just play through the game and have fun. Really, Dan? The first grind you want to focus on is getting all the correct shards in all of your defenses that you want to use. It's literally the biggest grind in the game and the most important one. So you definitely want to start there. I hope so too, Hutter. I mean, we'll have to see what happens, you know? I mean, they want it to feel like DD1, but they don't want it to be the exact same game, you know? So there will be differences uh, from DD1 to DDA. But I would love to see some quality pet builds. does watching the dragon sling the shots out there my dragon shoots 10 times faster than my paintball gun <laughs> the paintball gun cap is 10 shots per second my dragon is at 0 0.01 shots per second and that's times three because there's three projectiles so yeah man it gets it <laughs> i actually have better dragons too i just haven't upgraded it yeah, it's 0 .01 on your dragon. A good dragon gets down to 0 .01. <laughs> well, there we go. I actually completed it. It actually got smoother after switching to the boost monk. And it's weird because I feel like I was doing so much damage on the Huntress. But it actually feels like it ran way smoother switching it up. see what's in the box. Boo. Poo poo quality dragon. Or poo poo quality giraffe. No good. No good. We got a little bit of time left here. So I'll show you all what I plan to do for massacre mode. So let me get a uh, let me go with a hunter. I got the hunters in my deck still. Let me get rid of this pet because I don't want pets screwing up the numbers. But like on launch day, this is what I'm going to do. Like I'm going to first things first, I'm going to look and I'm going to see, okay, this paintball gun is hitting for 502,000 damage, right? So let's hop into just any nightmare map. We don't even need hardcore. And let's take a look at what they're what it's hitting for here. And I already know the number because I've already done this, but just kind of walking you all through what I'm planning on doing with Massacre. So if I look here, it's hitting for 77,000. Let's get another mob here. See if that's consistent. 77, 77. Okay, so it's hitting for 77.88 thousand. So what you would do is then you would take 77,880, what that is hitting for, and you divide it by 502,400. And we see it's 15.5%. So the difference in nightmare scaling is you're hitting for 15.5% of your damage done. Now, another thing I'd want to look at is, you know, say, say a wall. 
Now, I can't imagine there's going to be many buffs in Massacre, but... Like, my wall in Tavern is 81,000. 81.2 thousand. Well, if I go into a map... And I throw down a wall here. It's now 131,000. So you see our, our walls are actually getting buffed by being in nightmare mode. And we we should expect this, a similar type of effect in Massacre. Now, we don't know what that effect will be, but we should affect, expect something similar. Then let's look while we're here at, say, a harpoon. This isn't my pooner, obviously, but a harpoon... It's doing 42.23k damage per second in Nightmare. So 42.2k. If we go back out to Tavern. And you see here, it's only doing 25.9k. Which means my Harpoon is getting a damage buff as well, just to be in Nightmare. You think you heard something about a Nightmare dummy? Um, I haven't heard anything about that, but I would expect that they would get that. In DD1, how it worked is whatever you were set at. Like right now, as you see here, the difficulty is set at medium. But I could just run over and select a map without even joining it and change the difficulty to Nightmare. And then, if I looked, it would say Nightmare here. That's how it was in DD1. Or you guys can't see it because of my overlay. But anyway, it's in the bottom left-hand corner. It shows the difficulty you're on. So, I mean, I would hope that there would be a Nightmare Dummy, maybe a Massacre Dummy. Having a Nightmare Dummy and a Massacre Dummy would be awesome. I mean, that's another one of those things. It's something that... It, it would be a huge quality of life feature, you know, because it would save us time from having to go in and do what I just did and manually test stuff. But anyway, that's what I plan on doing with every defense first thing on launch day. Now remember too, launch day doesn't just have massacre mode. It's got more challenge maps, uh, pure strategy is supposed to be here. Uh, mix mode is supposed to be here. So realistically, you could go into the same Nightmare Hardcore Summit map that you've been doing, but do it on mix mode instead of regular Nightmare Hardcore, and you'll get better, theoretically, you would get better loot than what we're currently seeing in Nightmare Hardcore. So, like, the jump, we I mean, we don't even know. The jump may not even be go right to Massacre. We might have to gear up in mix mode first. You know? I mean, just something to think about. You know, that... That would be a game option, or that would be a game mode. You know, do we think we're going to be able to completely skip that game? Mixed mode is from Dungeon Defenders 1, and it varies the lane spawns. So different mobs can come out of different spawners than the normal lane schedules. And that's what makes mixed mode um, a harder difficulty. In DD1, so it, you know, it makes it so it's a loot modifier. You're gonna get better, better loot. Yeah, for sure. Uh, there, Hunter. No doubt. I mean, I would love, I would have no complaints at all if I had to go in and grind mix mode for gear prior to getting into to massacre. I would have no problem with that whatsoever. And what else would you check? Well, like aura ranges. You know, we know that Nightmare gives you a big old aura range uh, smackdown. We'll look at, say, my electric aura. Well, in Tavern, my electric aura is 8.84 meters. If I pop back into that Nightmare map, what's the range then? You know? Well, let's see. It's now 6.18 meters. So I got, what, two and a half, more than two and a half meters shaved off of my aura range. Or off of my electric aura, anyway. So that's another thing that I'll check. You know, aura ranges, blockade health, 
uh, the damage that the actual hero is doing. Well, it would give a higher, higher item power. If the highest quality is transcendent, that doesn't mean that the highest item power that you're going to see is 5,000. I mean, what if there's a 7,000 item power transcendent that won't drop in Nightmare Hardcore? You know? Or, you know, maybe, you know, say, like, Nightmare Hardcore, it's capped at 337 upgrades on an armor piece. Well, what if Mix Mode was 350, 380, whatever? I mean, there's lots of different things without introducing a new armor tier. But saying that Transcendent Gear is the cap is not saying the power level of that Transcendent Gear. I mean, look at the difference between level 70 or level uh, 83 and level 90 Transcendent Gear is pretty substantial, you know? Well, what if there's level 92 or 94 or 100 or whatever? You know, we just don't know. We don't know what's coming until it gets here. Now, if you want, you know, it's by all means not going to be final, and I mentioned it already, but anyone interested in getting a taste of that this weekend, you need to sign up for the Cavalry Testing Group. And it's Cavalry. You would want to send an email to Danny at cavalry at chromatic.games. Did I spell everything right? You'd want to send an email to that email address right there. Uh, well, Danny's probably busy. It's still in the work day for him, I'm pretty sure. He lives in uh, Northern Ireland, of course, but he has... Uh, he works on a North on a U.S. schedule since Chromatic is based out of the U.S. Yeah, I mean, there's not much time left, so if you're interested in doing that, you should do that. You know, no obligations or time requirements or anything like that. It'll just give you an opportunity to check out what they've got going at Mass Chromatic so far. Now, remember, too, that's not the launched edition. So even what you see in that test won't be the same as it is on launch day. They're always going to make it a surprise. Anyway, y'all, that is going to do it for today, though. I got Throne Room done a little bit quicker than I expected to. But uh, thank you all an absolute ton for swinging by. I do appreciate it very, very much. Um, I'll be, I was hoping to be live for hours still playing Diablo 3's PTR, but that got pushed back. So as soon as the PTR goes live next week, I'll be checking it out for sure. I'm just itching to try out that new Demon Hunter set. But anyway, y'all, that is going to get it for me for today. Uh, hopefully everyone's having a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. Uh, Redline needs more people to talk to in Discord, as you see. So by all means, join the Discord server and chastise Redline at every given opportunity. It's for the best. But anyway, thanks a ton, everybody. Have a good one, and I'll see you all next time. Take it easy.